today. So this is uh, our portfolio class for fall 2016, our night class, and we are going to uh, do a presentation on, or demonstration on, how to create an InDesign interactive PDF presentation. Okay, so I'm going to open InDesign. First things first. Yes, you do. If you go to your applications folder, um, because I have mine, yeah, we have to set all of this up for ourselves. With your login, it remembers what you wanted on your dock and things like that. So let's walk you through that first. The applications folder is found near your trash can. And you click on that applications folder and you will see an InDesign folder. I don't care, whatever software you want to use, whether it's Word, Photoshop, InDesign, it's all on here. You click on that InDesign folder and then take that ID icon that's in the InDesign folder and drag it to your dock, okay? That will kind of park it on the dock. And um, if you right click on that ID icon on the dock, make sure keep in dock is checked. Now, if you know you're going to use InDesign every day, you could also tell it to open it login, which is what I do because I use it every day. So you'll notice that I have parked on the dock my InDesign, my Adobe Illustrator, my Photoshop, my font management software, which is called Font Agent, that's also in the Applications folder. You just got to start typing in F-O-N and you'll see there's Font Agent. Um, I have my Word, Microsoft Word is also here. So I parked also my calculator, anything I use every day or pretty often, I park down there. And some of them I tell to open on login because I use them so much. So, yes, thank you. I forgot my, my typography class. We have everybody's doc set up already, and I forgot to tell you guys, hey, you've got to do that. So any preference that you set up here, uh, it will stick next time you uh, come to class. So is it keep in doc or which one? Uh, Right-click, keep in doc, and only have open at login checked if you know you're going to use it every class period. If you're not going to use it every class period, then you can open it as you need it. You just have to click on the icon on the dock to open it. Okay. So does everybody have access to InDesign now? Yes. Who wants it? Okay. Those who want it, hopefully you have access to it. Now this is pretty cool on the Mac because on the PC it didn't quite give us all this wonderful stuff. Uh, you could do something for an iPhone 5, iPhone 6, iPhone 7, or iPhone, there's no iPhone 7 yet, iPhone 6 Plus, there will be, don't worry, iPad, an Android, a Surface Pro, we're going to just do, um, I just do mine as web, 10, or 1280 by 1024, okay, so um, that's a pretty good proportion for the overhead projector, um, so we're going to do web. InDesign takes a while to open. Have you? Yeah, make sure yeah, you. It's a big picture. Yeah, it's dandy. Did you say something? So it's a beefy burger. It's a what? Beefy? Oh, yeah, it's very beefy, yes. I thought you said it was dandy. Well, I mean, it's pretty good. Oh, you know what? Oh, okay, never mind. It's so different on the Mac and the PC. Um, so I'm going to cancel that. Just do the web 1020. What was it? What did we do? New web document. Get the, it was. It was the 1280 by 800. 1280 by 800? Or was it 1240 by 1024 by 786? It really doesn't matter. Those are all good proportions, okay? It really doesn't matter. Okay. Now, um, it's been maybe a minute since you guys have opened InDesign. Hopefully not, but for some of you, it probably has. So um, we're going to walk through a couple of things with the Pages panel um, because that's where each of our slides are going to be, even though they're technically Pages. And if you guys can't keep up with this, just keep in mind I am recording this. Maybe if you're having a real hard time keeping up, 
just go, you know what, I'm going to sit back and relax and watch her do this so I can get just a basic understanding of what's going on. Then I've got that video recording so that I can, because you can slow me down and go at your pace with that video. Because sometimes when I get slowed down, uh, we might be here past time to leave and still not be done with this. I've had that kind of experience before. So if you're like, oh my God, she's going too fast, don't worry, we got the video, okay? All right, so we created that web um, format and we are going to the pages panel to uh, make some adjustments here to these pages. Usually I like to dress up, even though this is gonna be a simple presentation, I like to dress it up just a bit. Now I want on every page of my presentation, perhaps I want my logo or my name, just simply and graphically done. Now this, what we're learning right here is also possibly going to apply to the presentation that you give on Portfolio Day, okay? Could be exactly the same thing. So I will keep this, uh, this video posted on Blackboard and you can access it at any time, okay? But on the master page, you can change, you can put in, let's, let's say I wanted black backgrounds on most of my pages. Maybe some of them I want white. So I'm going to create a couple of master pages, one with a black background and one with a white background. So I'm double clicking on my A master in my pages panel. And I am going to choose in my toolbar the rectangle tool without the cross pairs in it, without the X in it. The one with the X is for pictures. That's picture box tool. Now I'm going to zoom out just a smidge. Let me get rid of a few things here. Okay, there we go. I don't want to zoom out too much. Um, we don't have to worry about bleeds on this. For those of you guys who are print folks, we know that when we draw a box and want to fill it with color, we have to bleed it off the edge. But in this case, I've drawn a box that is the whole page. And in my tools panel, the fill is set to none and the stroke is set to black. That's default. Just click on the swap button, which is the double arrows, and it will swap the fill and stroke. Now it's filled with black and stroked with none. That's what that little button's for. It's the swap, fill, and stroke button. And I did want this to be black, so yay. Now if you don't want to move that object, maybe you're going to put some more things on here. If you don't want to move that object while you're working, you can click on it and go to Object and Lock. That way if you go to put a text box or something on here and you go to move the text box, you don't accidentally move this black box that you created. Sometimes I lock things so they, just, so they don't get clicked on and moved. Now I want, for me, I am going to put near the bottom of my layout a line that goes across it and then my name in the lower uh, right hand corner. So I'm going to grab my type tool. I'm going to zoom into this lower right hand corner. You'll notice how I draw a box around the place that I'm going to be working in. I don't hit click, 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 click with the zoom tool. I am wasting my life. I don't have time to waste like that. You don't either. Just zoom right in there. Now I'm going to grab the type tool and I'm going to draw a text box roughly where I want my name to appear. And because this is automatically going to be black type, I won't be able to see it. So before I start typing, I might want to tell this that my character color, and you can see this at the control panel at the top or on the swatches, but control panel, you see the T, the fill of the, the that's the fill of your uh, type. Instead of black, I'm going to choose paper. Now when I start typing my name, it will come in white and rather small. Let me make that larger. There we go. Now to make it larger, I have it all selected and hold down shift command and period, which is greater than to make it bigger and comma or lesser than to make it smaller, holding down shift and command when I do that. But the text has to be selected with the type tool for that to work. Now, uh, oh, nothing says I am lazy like using the default font, in this case, Minion Pro. So I am not going to use Minion Pro because that is, I'm just, that's blasphemy. So I'm going to use something like Century Gothic. Assuming I can smell, spell it, not smell it, but spell it. 
well, it's not blasphemy. <laughs> I'm just being overly dramatic. <laughs> I don't have Century Gothic loaded. Oh, well, I'll, okay. I'm going to use Helvetica New then. It's got a lot of different things there. And maybe I want this to be a little bit bolder, so I'm going to do a condensed bold there. There we go. I want it to be able to be seen. Uh, the, yes. The shift man uh, caret thing for the font size, does mm -hmm. that carry over to the other programs? Or is that just it, uh, it does to uh, Illustrator, but not Photoshop necessarily. I don't think photo. I would have to test it, but Illustrator, I'm pretty sure it does. Okay. Uh, Photoshop, I don't think so. Could be wrong though. Okay, so there's my name set in the lower right hand corner. Now I also mentioned wanting a line to go across the bottom. Now this is, you, know, you guys all don't have to do this design. This is just an example. Uh, I'm going to make a line about as wide as this crossbar of this R because I'm going to have it run right into this uh, R. So I'm going to start drawing and I'm going to hold down my shift key to make sure the line stays straight. Oh, that's a black line. I wanted a white line. Well, up here on the control panel, um, I can see that here is the stroke button. It's a square hollow shape. And instead of black, I'm going to choose paper. And on the control panel, again, this is near the top, I'm going to increase the size of that line. Uh, it looks like it's between five and six. Uh, it's five is too small and six is too large, so I'm going to type in 5.5. And that's just about right. I'm going to move it off to the side so no one will know that I'm just a hair off. No one will know. I'm zooming out, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this line and extend it all the way to the other side. So now I have this line and my name, and this is going to be kind of the um, template for my slides. Move that down just a smidge. There we go. So this becomes about a little bit about me, because this is my work, pretending. I know the work I'm going to do here is not mine. I just stole it off the internet, uh, just for demonstration purposes. But I want a little bit about me, perhaps, and then a lot about my work. So this was on master page A, or A master. What if I need a white page with a black type? Well, I'm going to go up here to my pages panel, and just under the words A master, and above page one, there's this little line that separates them. I can pull that down, and I'm going to create another master page, and I'm going to call it B master because that's what it calls it. So in the master pages area, not where page one is, but above it, I right click and I hit new master. And it's going to call it B master, and that's fine. And I'm going to hit OK. Now it's white, because by default they're filled with white. Now I want my name down there in black with the line black. So I'm going to go to my first master page, which was my A master, using the selection tool, which looks like a black arrow on the toolbar. I am going to click on the uh, stroke, the line, and hold down the shift key and click on my name. Multiple selections means, you know, you hold down the shift key for multiple selections. You guys should know that. So I can copy that. Usually that's Command C, but I'm going Edit, Copy, just for visual reference. And I'm going to double click on my master page B, not a single click, but a double click. And I'm going to go Edit, paste in place. It puts it identically in the same spot. Now, the type, I need to click on the box by itself, perhaps grab my type tool, and make sure that that type is black, not registration, but black. And then I'm going to choose the line and, that I've drawn and make it also black. But you will see that these are in identically the same spot because I copied and pasted in place. So when my slides transition from one to the next, it, I won't have a shift in where my name and the line is. That's, that's good craft, digital craft. Now I'm going to save this because I haven't yet. And this will save it as, a, as an InDesign document. I'm, it's not currently going to be interactive or anything. This is just designing. And I'm ready to double click on page one and start putting in 
my work or the work I stole off of the internet. Now, usually the first slide I do is an intro slide. I don't put my work in there. Um, but one of the slide, one of the pieces that I downloaded just says graphic design and it would be a great intro slide. Now, to place that on this page, I would simply go to File and Place, which is Command-D on a Mac, Control-D on a PC, and I am going to locate my uh, folder that's for my presentation, and I'm going to find that initial piece of artwork and open it. Now, my cursor is loaded. You can see I'm just moving it around. And I'm going to click where I think that should go. Let's pretend that's me on my fancy little pad and doing some great graphic design work. We'll pretend. So this slide might be just simply an introduction about me as a graphic designer. And I give you maybe a little history of me, where I'm coming from, why I fell in love with graphics. Before you even see any of my work, you get to see maybe a representation of me uh, and hear a little bit about me. It's always good to break the ice with some sort of intro. Okay, so this is going to be my intro slide. Now keep in mind that if this goes live, and if I zoom in, you will see that this image is pixelated. The reason why it's pixelated is because I downloaded it from the internet and most likely it's 72 pixels per inch. I can't make that any better. Okay, it's not, yeah, I can't turn it into 300 pixels per inch. So when you guys are using uh, InDesign as a presentation type thing, make sure that your projects are exported or saved as PDFs at the high quality print, you know, higher resolution. Websites, um, that's a little more difficult because they're always pretty much viewed at 72 pixels print unless you built them in Photoshop at a higher resolution and did some slicing but most of the time that's not what you guys are doing. Um, so sometimes the web stuff um, can be a little trickier to deal with. How many of you guys have heard or heard of or used graphicburger.com? Raise those hands for Graphic Burger. It's awesome. How many of you have never heard of graphicburger.com? <gasps> Let me show you. I'm interrupting my presentation thing because I need something from Graphic Burger. Let's say I needed to show my website as a responsive website and I wanted some sort of little picture of that in my presentation and then when you click on that picture it links up to that website. So I'm on graphicburger.com spelled just like you would imagine. Graphic is spelled graphic and burger is spelled like hamburger. All smashed together one word with a dot com. Well, if I click on mockups, these are free. The mockups are free. There is a pay a place in here where you can get higher resolution mockups, but you have to pay for them. But you know, when it comes to portfolio, you want your stuff to be super, super. Uh, high, you want high res. But some of these mockups that are free will work. Okay, just know that they're not super high res. So you will see the most marvelous things on Graphic Burger. If you have decided to design a label for a juice bottle, uh, you can change the color of the juice of this. Uh, you, your label design is superimposed over this, and it is just so fun. If you had some hang tags that you wanted to make it look like you actually produced them, you put your information there, and it's an image, uh, what is it, what are they called, displacement maps. These are Photoshop files that you download, and the displacement maps are already done, and you, it just tells you in the Layers panel, it'll, you got to read it, it says, click on this layer to put your artwork here. I mean, it tells you what to do, you just have to read. But let's say I wanted something to look like it was on an iPhone or a computer. Oh, look right there. There's, the there's an iPhone 6. I can make Ivy Tech's website look like it's on the iPhone 6. Now, the only bad thing is my screenshot is horizontal, so I need to find something else. Maybe I need, oh, that's not horizontal either. I need to find a horizontal mock-up of either a computer or an iPhone. That's not horizontal. Oh, here we go, right there. I don't like the angle. 
Uh, oh, look, if you did a magazine that's saddle stitched or stapled, there's a mock up for it says brochure, but we could turn that into magazines. There's an, also a magazine one. If you want to make it look like you designed some shopping bags, there you go. These are great for clients. They think you went to tons of expense to create a one off, have it, a professional photo shoot done on it, and you think your client is worth all of that. You don't tell them that you didn't. You just show them their business card or their logo or whatever, looking all wonderful. And oh, yeah, you're just like, yeah, I'm just that good. And you don't share this secret, okay? So if you did a book, there's a book mock up, t shirts, there's all sorts of stuff. I wish they'd hold the phone to the side. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Oh, my goodness. Why is it the one thing you need is never there? Yeah, I just want, don't want a lot of clutter around it. Yes? A uh, quick, cheap plug. Another good website for mock-ups is placeit.net. Placeit.net. We'll have to check that one out. Another great place for these mock-ups. Placeit.net. Okay, I'm just going to have to just deal with a MacBook Pro today. <laughs> But you'll notice that the mock-up has a few different options available. Sometimes the computer or the book is open, sometimes it's closed. So you can, some, well in this case it's got a nice little phone next to it. Uh, but you can, oh my goodness, look at all these fabulous things. It's got both. But I really want just uh, this one right here. But I can download, visit download page. Thank you. Sometimes I believe you have to... Uh, I don't know if you have to sign it or not. This is mock-up freebies and it will give us the whole thing. Ooh, easy to use. You open the PDF file, you replace the smart object. Get a free download here. Download for free. Thank you. Oh my gosh, it's <laughs> happening. Let's see. Uh, one item. We want that. We want this. Oh, I don't know which one I want. Darn it. Yeah, pretty much. Mm. I don't know which one I want. Well, I'm just going to pretend I know. I don't want to go through the whole process of putting this on there, but let's pretend I did. But we can download this mock-up and we can replace the graphic on the computer with our graphic. It's super easy to do, but let's pretend that that has our Ivy Tech website on it. I'm just going to do a screen grab of it just to save some time here. Do -do -do -do. Where am I? Uh, I'm just going to steal a screenshot just real quick. Pardon me for my horrible demonstration. This is going to be a low-res screenshot. Do, do, do. All right. I'm going to be happy with that because I just don't want to spend all day dealing with this mock-up. But do check out Graphic Burger. It is awesome. We'll pretend that has the Ivy Tech website on it because I just don't want to take all night. We've got too many things to get to tonight. Okay, so the first page was my introduction page where I told about myself. And the second page is going to have uh, different artwork on it. So I'm going to drag, maybe it has black background, maybe it has white. I'm going to start with white background. That's my B Master. And I can drag B Master down and it will become page two. Okay? So there's page two. I just clicked on the words B Master, drug it right down into my regular pages. I'm going to go to File and Place, and I'm going to get my next graphic. Maybe this is my awesome graphic I created in Photoshop. Oh, that's kind of small. Let me make sure that you create these large enough so they take up a fair amount of the slide space, because we need to see the details of your work. Now, for those of you guys who are photographers, typically Lightroom is the thing that you would use for your photos, uh, versus having to do an InDesign thing. Uh, do, 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 um, Watch out for this little guy right there. I can't stand him because when I want to go move a picture, sometimes that content grabber, it, it moves the image in the box, but not the box, and it crops it. So I always hide this content grabber in InDesign. I can't stand it. I don't know why they invented it. Uh, that's just my personal loathe for it. So if you want to hide your content grabber, you go to View, Extras, hide content grabber because it is the work of well yeah it's horrible <laughs> it, it gives you troubles all day long work of the devil so go to view extras hide content grabber that was an upgrade they did i think to cs5 or six and i was like why it's horrible 
Again, this is a low risk graphic and this is not necessarily what we want in a presentation, but keep in mind, this is just a mock-up presentation for me so I can demonstrate this skill. So do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> no low res graphics. Okay, let's say my third page, that looks good on white, doesn't it? If that were black, oh, watch how I can quickly change this to black. Now this doesn't have a clipping path on it, but if I was like, ooh, I want this background to be black, I grab my A master and drag it right over page two and it'll go, oh, wait, it does have some sort of thing. Uh, and it, Oh, that looks horrible. Uh, but I just I just drug it over there. It's like, oh, instead of the B master, this needs to be modeled after A master. Now, that looks hideous, so I'm going to go back to B master. See how easy that is? You can just swap it out. Now, I'm going to create a third page. I don't know if it's an A master or B master. I'll just grab B master, white page. And I'm going to place my next item, file, place. And I believe that was advertising one. Oh my goodness, it's awfully small as well. Now, I don't know why in the world somebody had to have this in their portfolio, but I'm just pretending. I made it larger because it's all, it's about the work, so I'm making it fairly well-sized within this space. And that looks good on white. Let's see what it looks on black. Nuh-uh. Let's keep it white. And I haven't saved this in a while, so I'm hitting Command-S to save. And then my last page is going to be that website. So let me make this a little longer so I can see them all at one time. Maybe I'll put that on black. So I'm going to grab my A master and drop it down. That's going to be page four, or slide number four. And I'm going to go to file and place my fake, oh, I am so sorry about this horrible fakeness, my screenshot, and pretend the Ivy Tech information is on there. <laughs> I just didn't want to go through the graphic work. I can, and it takes too long. And before I, and, and maybe it's small like this is a teaser, and let me save it. And then I am going to click on this computer and it's going to go to Ivy Tech's website. Oh, you know what I'm really going to do? Watch this. This is horrible. Let me go to File and Place. And I'm going to do the screen capture of Ivy Tech's website. Okay, watch this. I'm going to, here's how it's going to go. Here's how we roll here. <laughs> well, doesn't that look fabulous? Oh, that's so realistic. Yes. Nailed it. Yep, nailed it. Mm hmm. <laughs> Never do something like this. <laughs> nailed it. Hire me. My digital craft is impeccable. <laughs> okay, but let's pretend that's on there. <laughs> I'm a total hack today. Okay. But we want to kind of give a little taste of this in this small little view we've got here. Talk about, you know, like in this case in the presentation, I'm going to talk about how, uh, my, how the uh, project, this, you know, this was a big project. Uh, uh, Miller Brooks did this, this whole campaign, this new one. So let's say I was working at Miller Brooks as an intern and, um, yeah, you don't care for it much. I love Miller Brooks, but I have to problem. say, I, I don't, I don't, I, I'm not, it's not my favorite either. Okay, so let that, that aside, it's not our favorite sometimes, but you know, it's what we paid for. And um, we have it, but let's say I was an intern at Miller Brooks and I actually worked on this thing. And I can say, I can have a backstory to this or a front story, however you want to put it, before I even show the interactivity and user experience, I can talk about how we did this research, how we talked to 10,000 students, we did the survey, because Ivy Tech has over 20,000 students, we got 10,000 to respond, yada, 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 yada. Do all this backstory. Okay, we're going to talk about the backstory too before I, we do this presentation. Um, so, but let's get this presentation uh, functioning digitally. So, we're going to, I'm going to save it. Now, let me warn you guys the last thing you want to do in InDesign is do your hyperlinks because. Know what goes on every page, already have it done, everything's perfect. The last thing you want to do is hyperlinks. And then after you do the hy your hyperlinks, the last thing you want to do is start adding pages and moving stuff. Because the hyperlinks get all whacked out. Um, so I always do my hyperlinks very, very last. Now, if your hyperlinks stop working because you did some editing and moving, it kind of sucks, but my last history with this was, um, my last time with this was we had to, this really was horrible. 
But it, I mean, worse things in life have happened. We had to create a new document, the same exact size, and we had to copy and paste everything to the new document and then redo the hyperlinks because we could not get the hyperlinks to work again. Okay, so I'm just warning you, hyperlinks go last. So let's create an interactive hyperlink on this. This is so fun. You can also embed video in InDesign. So if you're, you have vid, uh, if you're a video person or animator or whatever, you can actually embed that in here. Okay, so I'm gonna click on my <laughs> lovely website because when I click there, it, or actually I can do the big picture. That way if I click, if I'm a little sloppy when I click, when I click there, it'll open up the website. So I'm gonna click on that. And here's how you create the hyperlink. You go to Window, Interactive, and then the fifth item down on that flyout interactive button is hyperlinks, and you click on that. Now, we don't type put the URL in yet because we have to actually create the new hyperlink. So in InDesign, there is the create new button. It always looks like a little page. It's a bit like dog-eared. So I'm going to click on the new hyperlink button or the new button. And here it opens up a window that says new hyperlink. Now um, I'm going to go back to Ivy Tech's site because I want to copy that URL. I don't want any mistakes here. It's got the HTTPS and I might not have typed the S. Um, so I want to copy that. Go back to InDesign. Get out of here now. And I'm going to paste it in the URL. And for the, well, we don't need a style there. Um, do, 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 that's really all I need to do. I don't need a visible rectangle. I could, uh, I don't really need a highlight on that either. I'm just going to just hit OK. I just put the hyperlink and said OK. So there's my hyperlink right there. Okay, keeping in mind I do my hyper hyperlinks last. I can close my hyperlinks panel and then I can now save this as an, in, I'm going to save it regular, but then I'm going to export it as an interactive PDF, okay? So we go to File, Export, and at the bottom of this export window, you will see the format, and it says Adobe PDF Print, uh-uh. We want Adobe PDF Interactive. You can, but it won't function. <laughs> you can have hyperlinks in the print all day long, but it won't function as an interactive PDF. <laughs> you have to format it for Adobe PDF Interactive. I'm going to hit save, and it's going to come up with some options of do I want some page transitions, do I want it to automatically run, that kind of stuff. Do I want spreads or pages? Well, I want pages. I don't want spreads. Uh, I do want in the viewing, I want it to fit the page. Layout, single page, I just make sure everything, all my bases are covered. Do I want to open in full screen mode? Absolutely. Do not do a self-run show because you might get an interruption and you won't be able to function very easily because it'll keep on running and you're not ready for that next slide. So you want total control, so do not do flip pages every so many seconds, okay? Don't do that. Now if you're doing something for somebody's funeral, no, I'm sorry, let's be more positive. If you're doing something for someone's wedding and you wanted to show photos of them, of each of the bride and the groom, uh, growing up and whatever, go ahead and flip it every five or ten seconds. But this is something that we're going to talk through while we're showing it. Page transitions, uh, I didn't do any in the document itself, so here I'm just going to do a dissolve. It'll do it on every page. It'll be consistent. I don't have a transition that's different on every page. I can deal with that. It'll look nice. And let's see, I do want to embed the media. Uh, bu 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 bu. I'll view it after exporting. Sure, I don't need layers on this. I don't need a tag PDF. I do want to embed the thumbnail. So everything else looks pretty good. And I'm going to hit, uh, let me look at the other things. Compression. Oh, I want higher resolution. Now, guys, let's do a lossless compression because it's higher. And instead of 72, let's do 300. Now, keep in mind that even though my, my images I placed were 72 pixels per inch, changing this resolution to 300 will not magically make those 72 pixels per inch images go to 300, okay? Garbage in, garbage out. You start with garbage, you end with garbage. OK, 
Okay, so this is just making sure that um, if I did have high resolution graphics, that it would show very lovely here. It wouldn't have any pixelization. Okay. Oh, I don't need any security password or anything like that. So the things that we changed were under general uh, and under compression. And I hit export, and it's going to automatically view after export, okay? Because I told it to. So Adobe Acrobat's going to open, and here it comes. Wow, look at that. It's doing it all by itself. This document is trying to go full screen mode. Well, that's what I wanted. Yes, please. And now I'm ready to do my presentation. How fabulous is this? Isn't that lovely? Mm -hmm. And I can click, I, I can use the arrow down key. Ooh, did you see that dissolve? Wasn't that lovely? <laughs> well, first, oh, wait, I introduce myself and tell a little bit about myself. Then I might start talking about the next project before I even show it to you. There's nothing like building a little suspense. So, you know, I had this fabulous class and this wonderful professor named John Perez, and he was just so goofy and wonderful. And boy, did he speak quickly, and boy, did you have to keep up. But I learned this fabulous thing from him, and it was how to do uh, masking and how to bring two images together, make them look photorealistic. And so I thought, what a cool thing. I love my Macintosh laptop computer, and I love the, and I'm also a painter. You'll see it in my other works that I do things by hand as well. But I thought, let's make this Macintosh just splash full of color because it's my ultimate creative device right now. So what I did is I married two or three different kinds of graphics together, uh, the MacBook Pro, the uh, w this was uh, maybe a splash of water and then I had that rainbow effect in a whole other image. So you notice how I created a sense of, of uh, anticipation. I tell you about the project before you see it. So you're getting a mental picture possibly in your mind of this John Perez man and of this three different photos and, and oh, the MacBook Pro, of course we all love those and we know they're the ultimate tool. I built this picture in your mind. And then hopefully I didn't disappoint you when I came to the solution to my problem, how I solved it. And you're like, oh, <laughs> suspense. Tell a little bit about your stuff before you show your stuff. It's just much more engaging. And then you might segue, figure out a way to segue into your next project. Excuse me. Whoa, whoa I'm getting crazy. Well, you can clearly see I love color both in the previous slide and my current slide. So I'm going to continue with color in that I wanted to apply it to typography. Uh, so you'll see this big splash of color throughout many of my pieces in my portfolio. And I was challenged with using the typeface impact. I'm making all this stuff up on the fly, by the way. If I can make this stuff this up on the fly this well, then you should be able to with a project you're intimately familiar with. In other words, guys, I'm full of BS. <laughs> we call it graphic designer BS. But I was charged with doing this thing with impact, and it was all about graphic design, and I really wanted type to sing. So through color and and the juxtaposition of various words, I may type sing. Oh. So this is all about graphics, marketing, all sorts of things that we would go into advertising. So it was just a really cool typographic uh, example, an example of how I handle typography. Um, also, certain things are emphasized both in color and size. And so for me, really, it's about advertising, not graphic design. Sorry, I didn't have my BS line yet. Um, but you would have that well before you got to this slide. But again, this is not my work. I'm not all that intimately familiar with it, but I'm doing okay, all things considered. So my, I just love typography. It's so much fun. And color. So I married the two together. That's my next project. Okay, see, I'm not practiced. Um, so my next project, uh, not only do I do print graphics, I've also done some web graphics because I understand the need for versatility in this world. It's really hard anymore, I've heard, for graphics folks to just be print graphics folks. Um, we have to wear a few more hats. Uh, web developers oftentimes don't know the graphics as well. They're more back end, so we're working with them, and we're doing the design work for the web. So I want to show you some of my design work for web. And I interned, I had the great distinctive pleasure of working for Miller Brooks as an intern. And they, at the time, I was so lucky because they, got, they landed the Ivy Tech account. And I was really excited because I thought, man, how in the world am I going to make a difference here? This will be great. I will make a huge difference because I'm one of their students. 
Well, we did a survey of, of uh, we put a survey out there to 25,000 students, and um, the, we were charged with this problem. The objective was to get away from the Ivy Tech is cheap message and go with more of a educating people about what community college is, because Ivy Tech uh, was a state college for a long time. Before that, it was a vocational college. And so now they're a community college. And a lot of people in Indiana don't even know what a community college is because a community college, the system is too new. So we had to uh, really do plenty of research. We had to do a lot of marketing with uh, our uh, market research with our students. And we decided um, that we would have students as our main image. Our two color palette, our main color palette would be the Ivy Tech green. Um, we combined student imagery with a little bit of a creative approach where in their environment we did some drawings of where they're at. So there's kind of a, a virtual reality and a reality combined. And um, here's just a small screen capture of that uh, website. And this page is, uh, this, this, this um, depending on, it's random. When you go onto the site, you'll see sometimes this page or a different one. But uh, this one is, you know, so what is community college? Typographically, we chose a typeface that we felt more youthful, uh, not quite so business-like and stodgy. Prior to this, they were using Trajan Pro and Garamond. Uh, now we're using a hand-generated typeface that's much more fresh and hopefully more appealing to uh, this generation of college students. Uh, even though Ivy Tech has a wide range of ages, their, main, their median age is about 25. So we were really kind of looking at 25 and um, below because the percentages worked out that way. But we also were hoping that this would appeal to uh, students who are uh, non-traditional as well. Now I want to walk through some of the function of this site. Um, so I'm going to click here and hopefully you'll go to this website. You do hit, have to hit allow when you do this, guys. And um, Oh, it's opening Safari. Yeah. <laughs> well, have, you know, I was Googling before class, but I had so many inter interruptions before class. Um, I was trying to figure out how we could get this to automatically open in Google Chrome, and I have not found the answer to that on the Google yet. This is going to be uh, some serious digging because if you got, for web designers, most folks do not want to open their stuff in Internet Explorer or Safari. They want to open it in Chrome. So I am trying to find the solution to that problem. Yes. If you make a web browser your computer's main web browser, mm -hmm. wouldn't it just open with that? Or is it different when you open it through a program? Have you tried that? I don't know because with like that. Because if you open Chrome for the first time on your Mac, or if you open it for the first time on your login, it asks if you want to make that your browser. Well, you know, and I believe I answered that as yes at the beginning of the semester because I always use Chrome. So my assumption is, even though I did that, that that is not necessarily, the PDF is somehow overriding that. Okay. But I will test it again. I'll try it again. Um, I was just curious. Yeah, I am curious too, but I am, I'm pretty certain when I first opened Google Chrome on here, uh, the week before we started classes, yeah. I told it, yes, make Google Chrome my browser because I love Google Chrome. <laughs> um, but yes. Just, yeah, so I'm not sure why it's not opening in Chrome. Okay. So we gotta, I, I, yeah, like I said, I only had, I had very broken, fragmented focus this after, you know, before class trying to figure this out, and I have not yet found the answer. And I told my other class, I said, guys, I don't have time to find the right answer right now, so you guys go find it for me. I found it. Did you find it? Yeah, the upper left hand corner, the Apple, go to system preferences. We'll see if this works. Yeah, give it a second, it'll pop up. So I'm going to the Apple, go to System Preferences, in general. general. And then web browser, Ooh. Oh, let's see. Now on the PC, I don't know where it is on the PC, but on the Mac, that's where it is. Control panel on the PC. Okay. I'll tell my okay, I'll tell my other class and I'll say Erica is awesome. Okay, so let's I'm gonna close out Safari. And I am going to reopen this and see if it goes to Google, as we hope it will. Yes, it did. Oh, mm -hmm. Erica, thank you so much. So I'm going to go to the control panel to some of the general settings or whatever. I'll, I'll dig in the PC. I'll find it. Thank you so much. See, guys, you guys teach me. I teach you. You don't get paid. I do. <laughs> Sorry for your luck. <laughs> It is a shared experience. Okay, so there we go.
So it's not just telling it make my main browser, which it should have probably stuck in the preferences, but it, I don't know what's going on. Okay, so I would speak through some of the uh, user experience, the usability of the site. Uh, I might even, you know, you as an industry professional sitting there looking at my stuff, you probably have a smartphone in your hand and you're bringing it up on the smartphone to see how responsive it is. Mm -hmm. Very important, web folks. Better work on a few. And you know what Alan does on Portfolio Day? He brings in an Android, an iPhone. Uh, he brings in the iPhone 5, the iPhone 6. He brings them all in. A tablet. Sounds and he right. checks on every platform. <laughs> and he owns all those. Now, not all of them, he, he doesn't have a plan with all of them, but he hooks up to the Wi-Fi here. You don't need a plan to hook up the Wi-Fi. And he checks your stuff. And the industry professionals, they'll be pulling theirs out of their pocket, and each one of them has a different one. So if it's working on the Android, and it's working on the Galaxy, and it's working on the this or that, or whatever, you know, the iPhone 5, 6, 6.7, 6, 6 7, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so make sure your stuff is responsive and works on various platforms on your websites, okay? Okay, so I'm going to stop this, but I'm going to not stop my recording because there's one other place I want you to look in reference to presentation. But you saw how easy that was. Wasn't that easy, guys? It really was not hard. Uh, but I'm not going to stop recording because there's one thing I want to show. If we go to the resources panel in Blackboard, you're wondering, how do I speak about my work? Rebecca did such a good job, even though those weren't even her projects. And I really didn't do that great because I think not my projects and I wasn't practiced. Um, but you will see if you go down below library resources here, there's a thing called a critique guide. The critique guide isn't just a guide for critique, it's also a guide, there are points on what you need to discuss about your work. Okay, I don't care if you're a photographer, a web designer, or a graphic designer, or even, an, uh, even a painter, or a sculptor. If you've been commissioned to do something, you have strategy, reason, purpose, objectives, and those things need to be talked about. So let's say I'm a photographer, for instance. Um, if someone has given me an assignment, assuming they're not setting up the photo shoot, and they're not bringing in the models and setting up the lighting, you know, I think we've talked about that. If, that's, if they've done that, then that's technically their setup, not yours. So take what you've learned and do that on your own. But let's say the assignment was... Um, Maybe in photojournal, how many of you have had photojournalism? Anybody? What, what's an assignment they give in there? Remember anything specific? No, I'm kind of putting you on the spot. Let's say they said, go capture action. I'm just grabbing something out of the blue here. The, okay, so, so when I have my, before I even show my photos, I talk about, I had an assignment, a photo assignment, and the objective was to go capture action. My strategy to do that was to go to um, a ball game. Maybe I go to a ball game. No, I would, re me, I don't go to ball games. I'm going to dance kaleidoscope because that is really cool and extremely photographic. So I decided that my strategy would be going to the Dance Kaleidoscope, but before I did that, I actually um, learned a little bit more about them. I researched them, figured out where they practice, uh, found out that they do a little bit of practice at the YMCA at the Athenaeum Turnverein, where the Rathskeller is. Um, got with the guy who uh, runs it. I uh, can't remember his name off the top of my head, but I, I called and finally got in with him, and I told him, that I was going, wanting to do a motion assignment, and could I quietly and unobtrusively sit in during their practice and to get some shots? And then I also am getting tickets to the next Kaleidoscope event because I also want to photograph that because the lighting is so much different than in the practice room. And he agreed that I could do that if he could use some of the photos to promote dance kaleidoscope. So I was like, well, sure, you know, that's a good trade. Uh, we didn't change, no money's exchanged on this one. I just love, I love the idea of it so much, and I need a portfolio work. Um, however, I told him next time, if he likes my stuff, then we can maybe work out something. 
So, um, so the, 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 uh, the concept is motion. My strategy was contact Dance Kaleidoscope and go to practice and to the uh, show. So there's a story behind everything, right? There's a story behind everything. So I don't care if it's a photo shoot, a website design, a logo design, a brochure, whatever. There is an objective and strategy to everything. So be prepared to discuss the objective and strategy. You're oftentimes given the objective in the assignment. Uh, if you don't have the objective, then you talk to the client. Like if it's not a school project and it's a real project, what's my objective with these caterpillars? Give, keep them alive. You have a question. That's all right. I know, I know you did the same thing. Like, oh, crap. Yes, wrong question. What's your question? I know what I did in your class last semester. We did what we would Typography? No. No. Oh, oh, fundamental. No, intro to computer graphics. Yes. Yes. Um, we would do a thing when we presented our work where we would talk about sort of like, we would first talk about our work, but we would talk about how we got there. Like the failures we had, how uh -huh. we overcame them, yeah. how we decided to change about uh -huh. uh -huh. Do you, I guess my question is, like, when we're giving the portfolio presentation, do you want us to sort of steer away from that? Or in a way, that? in a way. Okay. Um, some of those things, though, those failures and then learn from it and got better are nice additions to the story. But you don't want to do that with every piece. Not every you don't piece. Want it to be wrong, right? Exactly. Okay. And there's, there's two different ways to present something. You can present as a student, which is what I was having you guys do. Right. Or you can present as a professional. So we were doing that mostly to learn from it and teach other people from our mistakes. Uh-huh. We don't need to teach these people right. to present ourselves. No, right? you, we were talking, yeah, we were like doing reflective statements, like yeah. in reflection, here's what I've learned and here's what I would do better and here's what I learned how to do better. And, and I really grew from it. A little bit of that can be in a conversation about a piece. That is perfectly fine because they understand you are getting ready to graduate from college. Yeah. They understand that. But, you know, if, if it's a piece where you're like, yeah, I did okay and I really, you know, I didn't struggle, you don't need to talk about any of the struggles. Now, the struggles they don't want to hear about is um, I couldn't get the printer to work. <laughs> right. They don't care. The printer doesn't work all the time. You know, they have the same problems. Um, but if you, like, we had a student who, they overcame this during portfolio, and they mentioned it, and they said, um, I want, they said, you know, I'm, I have my portfolio ready and my presentation ready, but boy, let me tell you, this has been a tough semester, and let me tell you why. About middle of the semester, I, we had a field trip to the uh, art center up in Broad Ripple, and I went with a fellow student who has a Jeep, one of the Jeep Wranglers with a soft top, and I had my laptop in there, my backpack, uh, my, my backup drives and all my flash drives in there. And we went on this field trip and we were doing some stuff, some photographs, and it came out and the Jeep had been cut open and all of my stuff was gone. So my portfolio has literally been built within the last three weeks. So please bear with me. Things are not absolutely perfect, but they're as perfect as they're going to get all things considered. She presented this in a way that was positive she didn't make it an excuse, but she wanted people to know that given more time, she might have even produced better work. When they saw her work, it was very well done, all things considered, and they were very proud of her. So that kind of situation, yeah. she did mention, and people were like, one lady even said, wow, you are one hell of a go-getter. I don't know that I would have been able to reproduce that much work within three weeks the way you did. <laughs> And, and pull it off. Yeah, yeah. So those kind of things where you've under, overcome something pretty major and learn from it. What did she learn from that? She learned you can't put all your eggs in one basket or one backpack. And that you better have some off-site backup, whether it's the cloud or something. You've got to have an off-site backup. Okay, I'm telling you guys this now because how many of you guys have your stuff backed up and it's off-site somewhere where, you know, if something happens and tornadoes and fires and, thing, and cats and dogs and whatever, they happen, they destroy it, and you are left with, hopefully, some pretty strong backup where you can pat yourself on the back. And let me tell you, the better story would have been, you know what, 
I was all covered. I had to get a new laptop and whatever, but you know, I back everything up on the cloud. So luckily I didn't have to redo everything, but I did have to redo a couple of things because <laughs> I didn't have them backed up yet. That would be the better story because that says that that person planned for the worst. Okay. But either way, they turn lemons into lemonade. Um, so great question about that. Uh, a little bit of student talk is okay because we are students. We're, we're all students. Even when you graduate, you're students. You're, you're always learning. But talking about what you learn is really, I think, very important. Uh, some things not as important as others. Okay, so here we have, I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. In our critique guide, which is also your presentation guide, talk about your strategy and concept. Let's talk about concept for just a second. How many of you guys have played Connect the Dots before when you were a kid? You know, one, two, 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 three, and then by the time you're done, you get this really cool picture. It's like magic as a kid. You, you're like addicted to those things. How many of you guys have been addicted to Connect the Dots at one point in your life? Like, oh my God, yeah. I couldn't wait till Highlights Magazine came at our door. Because <laughs> we were deprived children. And my grandparents bought us Highlights Magazine, and our only form of children's entertainment was Little House on the Prairie and Highlights. And you wanted to get the mailbox first because there were four of us kids and only one Highlights Magazine came to four kids. How unfair is that? So the person who went to the mailbox, they had the advantage because guess what they got to do? The dot to dot. Ha ha ha! Everybody, the other ones got goofus and gallant and find, find the high hidden pictures. Dot to dots were so cool as a kid. We as visual artists, designers, photographers, web developers, when it comes to concepts, we are the dot connectors. But what we do is we connect two dots that otherwise no one would have thought to connect. For instance, you guys have watched the Super Bowl, and you probably, if those of you guys who don't give a crap about the game like me, I don't give a crap. I watch it for the commercials. Because there are some of the best minds putting together some of the best commercials. Not always, but there's usually, most generally, something that's really stellar. And some things are just weird. But last Super Bowl, they were they had the Prius, the Toyota Prius on there, a commercial for the Prius. And the Prius outran police. Yep. Okay? I have a Prius. It is not a police <laughs> outrunning type of vehicle. I don't see the Dukes of Hazzard going into their Prius and running away from, you know, Boss Hog and all those guys. Now, for those of you guys who don't know what that is, please bear with me. It was popular when I was a kid. But how did the Prius outrun the police? It's not a fast car. In fact, my Prius handbook says you should rarely drive over 70 miles an hour. Keep it under 70 because it keeps your engine lasting longer because it's a four-cylinder engine, and four-cylinder engines don't like to be under that kind of duress. Okay? So how does a Prius outrun the police? Excellent gas mileage. They outran them because by the, they were running all day from the police because they could, because the police had to stop and get gas. Okay? What two dots are connected? Prius and outrunning the law. Not possible. <laughs> two dots that should never been connected. But under the context of a specific idea, those two dots work beautifully together. And there are many people out there that are going, hmm, I wish I'd thought of that. How many of you guys have ever said, I wish I'd thought of that? You're just envious of that fabulous connection of two dots that should have never happened. But somebody thought it through well enough to make it work. This happens in photography. It happens in graphics, web, everything. If you're wondering how it happens in photography, if you have any commercial shooting done and you're doing something for somebody and you're getting you know, paid for it, it's not a wedding and it's not a, a prom and it's not a senior portrait. And it's, well, even with those, you can have really fun ideas. In fact, sometimes with senior portraits, those kids are nuts. They'll come up with all sorts of connections of dots and you're like, oh my goodness, you've got a, you've got a really tall order here. Even weddings, the same thing. 
But those folks who have those dots connected and create interest in concept, be it's thinking. It's not just a pretty picture. Because I can design brochures all day long that look pretty, but they mean nothing. There's no concept. They're not concept driven. Um, I can do photographs that are gorgeous, just absolutely gorgeous. And those, those are okay to put in the portfolio. I'm not saying there's any, anything bad about it, but they're not really concept driven. But in my portfolio, I should have a couple of things in there to, that people go, oh, man, I wish I'd thought of that. I wish I'd thought to, to pair those things together, to pair those two thoughts or ideas together, and, or those two things, and make it work. So concept development is about the idea. And the idea is oftentimes about connecting a couple of dots. Define what the purpose of the design is. What information need to be communicated? Now, we talked about the Ivy Tech website. What needed to be communicated was, well, we didn't, I didn't really go into that, but first was we need to educate people on what a community college is. That's what needs to be communicated. Secondarily, they need to also sign up for classes and every other thing on that site. Uh, what does the design, or does the design meet the objectives? How did, how did what you do meet the idea and the objective and the purpose and the strategy? Um, what, what's the idea, the design concept or the idea? Did it fit the strategy? Okay, so on, um, now this is not design related, so I want to ask about that again. Um, on the Prius thing, can you imagine I'm sitting in the room talking about that thing? I got an idea. Well, when they start doing their storyboarding, they have to make sure they go back to this idea and strategy and they make sure it fits so that it works. So they, they can also explain it to Toyota who they're selling this commercial to. Now when it comes to the production and design part of it, or the visual part of it, this part discusses how you use elements and principles of design specifically based off of the content you're given, the strategy, the design, and also the audience. How does it fit the audience? How are they going to react to certain if we had, if, if Miller Brooks had made Ivy Tech's website all red, wouldn't you guys be like, what are they thinking? Why did they choose red? For the monster truck rally that happens down at Lucas Oil, are they using pink and pastel colors? When you hear monster, rah, you don't think of pink and pastel. Okay. It's more rough edge. The type is rough and it's always kind of crazy and scratchy looking. It's because it's dirty. Lime green is really bright and it's against black. And you know, you got your monster beverage, which is also green and black. And, and it's just, yeah, lots of uh, neon and bright colors with black. So, why did you do certain things a certain way? How did you do things a certain way? Uh, how does it relate to the subject? How is the audience going to perceive it? And the, the expectations of it. These are the question, or These are the, the statements that we make when we're talking about the design. Our job as a designer using the principles and elements of design. Line, shape, val value, color, uh, texture, type, rhythm, balance, emphasis, all that good stuff. Contrast. And then lastly, Sometimes we talk about craft. Craft can be things like, um, I used a special paper on this. I had this paper shipped to me from Dolphin Papers, and it was handmade in Japan, and there is only one person that makes this paper in the world, and I thought it was important because it fits my topic, which maybe I'm designing something for a Japanese exhibit. It fits it very well. I thought it was uh, unique. I wanted something unique and one of a kind. That was unique and one of a kind, about as unique as I could get, without making the paper myself. And so um, if you fold it a certain way, like um, like I have an invitation that I fold it into, it looks like a jacket when it's folded. And when you open it up, you actually, then you can't see type when it's folded, but when you open it up, the invitation is on the inside of the jacket. It's an origami fold. You know, that, those kind of things are very interesting to people. And I took the time to figure out how to fold this thing and also how to print on it without it being seen until it was open. And I also figured out that people would not have a hard time folding it back because once the folds were trained, it would just kind of pop back into its shape and people weren't upset because they're like, oh, no, I can't fold it back. 
So I did all these things to make it very, very interesting. Little extra details. Uh, sometimes people do die cuts. Look at this right here, this folder right here. 10 cent folder. Does that look like 10 cents to you? That looks pretty good. She just cut a hole in it and there's her, there's her logo type. She turned in a 10 cent folder into something that looks much, much more expensive, much more refined. They say it's not what you have, it's what you do with what you have. This is the example where, this is an example where craft, craft, what you bring to it. It's like the statement in the story. Exactly. Make a statement. Do something different. And it's something unexpected. Most other people wouldn't do. And then you can just, and like, uh, oh, for instance, a photographer. Uh, there was a photographer, I believe in New York City, but um, this photographer also loved typography. And so they uh, projected type uh, onto models, beautiful models. And they carefully, I'm sure they had some assistants uh, who helped them with this, but they carefully, while it was projected on there, they carefully traced the typography on their skin and uh, it, would look, it looked awesome. And then they did this really cool fashion photo shoot. And it was just gorgeous. You can't tell me that we can't talk about craft on that one. So what kind of special things, special processes did you bring to, to it? For web, uh, I've had students who they're like, ooh, like we go to awards.com and the web designers are like, Oh my God, how'd they do that? Like, I don't know, look it up, reverse engineer it. But I have had students who go to wards.com and have found, I don't know, I haven't gone here recently. Usually I like to go to uh, websites and just see what's going on. That you vote on them. Is it thundering? Or is somebody just walking on the ceiling? Um, might be thunder. We'll look at the weather here in just a second. But when I go, when people go to awards.com, like when Parallax first came about, nobody knew what it was. Students were like, what is that kinetic stuff on that web? I'm like, I don't know. Let's look it up. It's on this awards.com stuff. Things are like moving and there's different dimensions going on. This is cool. And so we figured, oh man, whoa. Yeah, web folks, eat your hearts out. Um, you know, this is really super kinetic. So what you do is you start reverse engineering, you start tearing apart their website, you start getting the code, and you start stealing their code to figure out how it's made. Um, yeah, that's kind of interesting, isn't it? But I've had students who, yes, Alan is not teaching this right now. He's not ready to teach this. He's you know, web changes so quickly. He's like, oh my God, that's cool. And he's not he's got other curriculum already developed. And I've had students in portfolio who have burnt some midnight oil, figured out how some of this stuff works, and then they can bring to the presentation, hey, we haven't learned this in class yet, but I've seen it, and it's newer, and I really liked it. So I decided my digital craft needed to up it a little bit, so I researched it, and I figured out how to do it. Oh, my God, sold, as long as it looks good. People are like, oh, yes, this is the kind of person I want working for me. Somebody who problem solves. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, how do they do that? Ooh, I don't know. We'll have to look it up. Okay, I'm going to get out of there before I get dizzy. <laughs> so things like this are a matter of researching, reading what this is, uh, trying to dig into it, and, and uh, doing a little figuring. Okay. So we need to make sure that when you are, before you're presenting, I don't want to, I don't, this is one of the few opportunities you guys have to practice presentation. We don't have a lot of opportunities for that. Oh, it sounds like it's really thundering out there, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, we've got some. Right, uh, it's, just, just, it's just rain, though, because this, oh, yeah. this late at night, usually it's not anything major. Yeah. Um, but I, got, I lost my train of thought because of thunder. Oh, um, <laughs> this is one one opportunity for you guys to try to practice and present professionally if you are not practiced and you just are fuddling through stuff 
I don't want to embarrass anybody, but I will say, okay, okay, enough, stop, go sit down. Because you're wasting your time, you're wasting my time, and you're wasting 14 other people's time. Um, so practice. Practice how you're going to speak about your work. Practice what you're going to show first. Um, just practice. How many annual pieces? Uh, for photographers, we might start out this process with about 75 photos, but they're going to narrow it down to 20 to 25 photos for the ultimate presentation on Portfolio Day. I mean, for Tuesday. And for, huh? Like for Tuesday. For Tuesday? I'm, I'm getting there. Ooh. I just, I just, not just said photographers <laughs> need 75. Ooh. Okay. Let me, let me get there. Okay. Uh, for web designers, uh, you know, you're going to have some apps, possibly, uh, quite a few websites. Um, uh, most folks sell about around 8 to 10 things on portfolio day. So it just depends on the scope of the project. If you're saying it's too little, it doesn't mean it's too little. If you're saying it's a little, it doesn't mean it's too little. the logo uh, and all the website the everything the whole thing planned out yes Maria. so I'm an information major uh-huh but I've been here for two years and most of the stuff that I've done so far is gonna be like I've dabbled in everything I've done uh -huh. the design I've done the typography I've done yep. everything you're planning on going to IUPUI as well yes yeah. so should I like sample all of the different things that I did or should I start I'm taking two animations I think the best advice that I can give you under these circumstances, but at the same time, we may have to give a little bit of variety to it. The best advice I'm going to give you is that you should always be able to play with it. You should put into your portfolio the art that you want to do with your work. You should have to play with it. You have to play with it. We often say, we know you're taking this step. We know you're taking this step. Your, so your presentation, when you when it comes up, is going to be not as heavy animation because you don't have that much stuff yet. Right. So you just going to fill it with things I'm really proud of that I've worked on. Um, right yes, now. because especially those things that took some drawing skills and hand skills, because those certainly apply to animation. So if you, I know, I know, I can only speak for what I've seen in my classes, my class with you, like you did your portrait. Uh, your self-portrait, and we did the Adobe Illustrator little icons. Yeah. Those those skills apply to animation. Right. They may be still, but they still apply. So for now, what, until I get those things finished, you want me to do things that I can then apply to animation? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we should see illustrative skills in your animations. We should see typographic things, like in the uh, intro to an animation, you might have some sort of very cool typography that, you know, like in movies, they have the the really awesome typography in the beginning and even at the end of the movie is some of the best typography. If you stay at the end of the movies, especially Pixar and some of those really cool places, they do the most awesome stuff with typography that's so unexpected. And movies in general do. Not every movie, but I'm always baffled at the kinetic, the kinetics. Like if you use an After Effects, uh, you can do all sorts of really cool kinetic things with typography. So um, you might want to start Take it, you know, go ahead and bring the projects in. Well, we might dream up some things to do with After Effects or yeah, something like that. After Effects, and yeah. I have the basics down to where I can just animate logos, which is what I'm doing right now. Yeah, yeah. So I'm animating my own logo, and I'm probably going to bring the logo and the animation over to my portfolio. Exactly, exactly. Because I don't have a logo that I've gone yeah. consistently up at this point. Right. So bring, bring in what you have that's okay. not animation. Yeah. And, and, and while you're thinking about what you're putting in there, 
and you're going, okay, I think I'm going to show this and this and this. Tell us what you intend to do with it. So you know what? I did this in Intro to Computer Graphics, and it started out as this illustration of whatever. But my intention is to include it in some sort of motion graphics in the following way. Assuming you can even dream something up like that. So that's what I want to do for this presentation for just the practice. Yeah. One. And mm -hmm. then I will yeah, we have won't. A bunch yeah. of stuff finished. Exactly. Finally. So we won't see a lot of animated stuff up front. We may see right. some preliminary things that you might choose to use in an anima animation, uh, assuming, yeah, you have some good stuff to pull from. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. The, it's really tough for the students who are doing animation because we don't have very many of them. And, um, you know, and you're also here for a very short time with not a lot of animation classes. So, yeah, it's the cards are stacked in a really awkward way for you guys. Yeah, Maya, Ma, the Maya class is going to make, I think, a world of difference. Yeah, thank goodness we have that. So I think yours, yours will be stepped up a notch compared to previous semesters. And you have students in your class this semester who have already graduated and who have presented their animations. And they are going to be so envious of you because you'll actually be able to show your Maya stuff in your portfolio where they couldn't when Portfolio Day came. I wish I could remember the guy's name. His name is Chris, maybe? Uh-huh. Chris Pate. Chris yes. Pate. Yeah. Yes, Real nice guy. Class and he has a ton of stuff done. Yeah. Yeah, he graduated last semester, and um, he went through the whole portfolio process. And yes, he he was like, "Darn this animation class! It's coming later than what I want." I said, "Take it anyway." You know Chris? Was he, is he an animation major? Uh, well, I, I, there's really no animation major. He he wants to he wants to major in animation over at IUPY. Sorry. Yeah. Uh huh. Going forward yeah. to that. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's that's what his dream job is. Uh, yeah. So it's unfortunate that Viscom doesn't have a ton of animation classes. Um, but, you know, it, it seems like it, it, we are evolving. And it gets, this is a good place to get started for that, because I feel like I've learned all the basics, and I'll be able to design better stuff going into my animation. Yeah, yeah because your animation encompasses typography, line, shape, value, texture, color, all sorts of stuff. And even in animation, you're going to have things like buildings and signage and things like that that you're going to have to pull together. Uh, so it, it, you'll have to have graphic design skills to be able to do that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so the last thing was crap. So, um, yeah. Yeah. The other thing. Maybe think of something to do uh, like uh, the Frayed Knot project that John does, mm -hmm. and I think I might have mentioned this before, and the, the Photoshop collages where you grab lots of different, different graphics. Some of that stuff is just awesome looking, but we're going to repurpose it. So do bring it in. Make it part of your presentation. Just please maybe speak to what you plan to do with it, uh, and we will also give you some feedback. Maybe some brilliant uh, epiphanies happen during this process and somebody might throw out a bone to you where you're like whoa yeah I think I will do that with that thanks that's a good idea because you know 12 heads are better than one okay I think it's about time for a break let's go outside and take a shower um, no, I think I still recorded this so let me stop this recording <laughs>